Good afternoon, everyone. This video is brought to you by Trade Genius Academy, teaching you how to trade and profit during the Grand Solar Minimum. Click the link below to see what they offer. We know the Earth is heading into a Grand Solar Minimum. The next piece of the puzzle we need to look at are the primer fields on the Sun. Solar winds are diminishing, and as the field current entering our Sun diminishes, there has to be an equalization, as there would be in a capacitor. Solar winds are diminishing, so we are absolutely looking for large CMEs or EMPs coming off the Sun. Will it be a small series or will it continue as such for equalization? The first of such events has already occurred. This massive CME, if it had been facing the Earth, we would no longer have power on one side of the planet. This same set of sunspots is rolling back on the Earth-facing side again. And since we're so steeply entering this grand solar minimum and so quickly, with the change in magnetic field strength around our sun and the earth and the rest of the solar system, we should start to see anomalies, electrical phenomenon. So far we've seen Steve, a new type of electrical arc in the sky. These red sprites over Austria looking exactly like the Thunderbolts project had predicted. Seeing again ancient iconography. We start to see the same things matching from Greek coins appearing in our skies as we speak. And now we have blue sprites. And join me for episode number 29 with Bob Kudla, where we actually talk about when the food prices start to rise, where are the first impacts to the global economy going to be felt and how you can protect yourself. Adapt 30 while you're watching, click the bell so you can stay subscribed and get the latest updates. I'm going to start you off here with predictions of solar activity based on magnetic field variations. This is the forecast going out as we enter the grand solar minimum that's going to usher in cooler temperatures on this planet as well as more cloud cover due to increased cosmic rays. If we look out over longer time scales from circa 1200 AD about 800 years ago, but this is actually the multi-century heartbeat of the sun. Now Rolf Witsche put out a series of videos, Ice Age, the dimmer of the sun in 30 years. This is based on David Lapointe's work so when the primary field starts to collapse on our sun, not only are the solar winds going to be diminishing, but there'll also be changes in our magnetic field, which should mimic something like ejection jets. We'll start to see phenomenon in the skies that we haven't seen before. The surface of the sun is going to go through some changes. Think of it as a solar system capacitor. And as the field aligned currents powering our star step down, the sun is going to need to equalize as well. It'll be overcharged, if you will, in a simplistic way to put it. I've talked with Lee Wheelbarger about this and Rolf Witsche. They firmly believe that our sun is going to have massive CMEs, if not EMPs, as there's equalization in the magnetic and electrical fields. So we were discussing, is it going to be a single pulse like this, or is it going to be a pulse above and every time it steps above and below 36% as the solar wind diminishes and we get into this 2019-20 era, are we going to step back up and step back down as a sputtering engine would and each step up or down is going to fire off what we just saw last week with massive CMEs or is it going to continue and up and down, up and down, up and down? And the very first instance of what we were talking about is right here. It occurred July 23rd, massive CME. If this thing had been facing Earth, Part of our planet would no longer have a power grid. This was a Carrington style event flare that came off the sun. And coincidentally, that same sunspot region 2665 is coming around for another pass. Now when we compare the Maunder minimum, which is above, there was a more gradual tapering into the grand solar minimum. It took about 50 years so people could adjust. Below is what we're going into right now, and it is just going to drop off a cliff. We're going to enter this grand solar minimum so quickly in less than a decade. The forecast out here from Zarkova, Shepard, Popov, and Zarkov, I broke it down and put the lines in there with the dots of the amplification effect versus the prior year. Also, when we look at planetary geometry, we can look back through history and see the same exact matchups when we enter these grand solar minimums. So now to couple all this together to give us a better indication of what's going to happen with our Earth heading into this cooler period, 
Thunderbolts Project. There's an incredible series of videos put out by David LaPointe, The Primer Fields, parts one through six. Highly encourage you to watch this. So as the field current powering our star steps down in intensity and charge, the magnetic fields will also lockstep with that, changes. One thing in the laboratory, the wider the space in between the magnetic field emitters, the more the plasma starts to actually spin. And also the varying geometrical shapes of the ejection jets. And what I mean by this is every planet has a magnetic field around it. And we do not actually stay in a stable orbit that is always the exact distance from the sun. It varies over time, over centuries, over millennia. And what seems to happen when the Jovians are all lined up behind us, pulling on the Earth, our orbit goes out slightly. This is a possible trigger for the cooling or some other feedback loop on the planet in conjunction with our star changing its field charge. Now we can go back to prior grand solar minimums. So this is the best matchup that I could find going back in history, 79 AD and 89 AD. We get the same exact matchup. I'll put them side by side here so you can see going into the grand solar minimum. Let's fast forward 2024. The only difference is Neptune leads. And this was an interesting fact because I tried to go back and find when Neptune was leading in the pair and we have to go back circa 3000 plus years in this cycle to find something like this. The software I'm using only runs back to year number one on solar system scope. They've actually updated their software. It used to be able to go back 2,500 years or so, but that's no longer the case. The JPL models also stop around 2000 BC, but we need to continue further back in time to find when this cycle is repeating again when Neptune's leading. And I'll ask you, does this look similar to what we saw 79 AD? Now, when the forecast came out for the sunspot number progression into the 11 year solar cycle is off by about three years from their original projections, put it out at 2020 or 2021 when we hit the bottom. And as you can see right here, we're gonna be hitting that around 2018. Ulysses, somehow their information just stopped being published online, but before it was, you could see the decrease in solar wind pressure, which led to all of this research, talking about solar mins diminishing. And the thing that's yet to be known is at what point does the solar wind pressure diminish enough where the sun really starts to try to equalize charge and just send out all the extra energy that's been encapsulated by these primer fields? My research on ancient history has brought me to 36% because nine is such a sacred number and so is 36. Maybe they knew something about the cycles and the percentages of solar wind. I believe there was at least one previous society before our own that was more technologically advanced than we are, possibly two. And they left messages for us going forward. They would have to encode it into religion, into myth, into legend. And this number 36 and nine keep coming up again and again and again. And whether you're looking at it from a mythological standpoint or from a science standpoint, when Tesla says, to understand the universe, you need to understand three, six, and nine. And this nine is a sacred number everywhere you look. And we start to take a look at 36 and we find the 36 deities across Asia. That number was left for a purpose. So now we start to take a look at the magnetic fields that are gonna be changing as well. We're gonna to start to look for unusual electrical phenomenon so the number of red sprites that are being captured on film across the planet is in an exponential increase over this last year and a half. And I know this excuse is always that, oh, our cameras and technology are better to capture those down to a fraction of a second. But that's not really the case because 10 years ago, we had the same capability, yet the ramp up in these sprites being captured by amateur photographers globally now is upticking in a noticeable fashion. And it shall follow this exact curve here entering into the grand solar minimum. Now let's go back to David LaPointe's experiments in the lab. When you put a wider space in between the magnetic field emitters, and it's not much, 
on a solar system type scale, it's only going to be several thousand miles that'll have an effect electrically, magnetically. So what was seen in the lab before full glow mode was this array of ejection jets. Now our Earth is going to be pulled slightly away from the sun when the Jovians and all the planets are lined up on our side. And this small movement in our orbit will absolutely have noticeable effects. We're already starting to see in the sky in July over Austria, something that was on Greek coins. We start to look back into Assyrian and Sumerian stone carvings and reliefs, and we find these same symbols. And here it is appearing in July over our own skies again. And again, the thunderbolts are starting to match up a lot of these as well with the shapes that they're seeing in the skies, especially the electrical phenomenon. These sprites are becoming so intense. And this was captured over the UK. So what I did was I brought it in and we start to see the same thing. I just cropped it and reversed it. We see the exact same geometrical patterns that are forming again. And now we have blue sprites over Brazil so strong that they're visible during the day. This is an increase in electrical activity. Absolutely. And when they start to talk about thunderbolts from the sky and Zeus and the ancient gods of Sumeria with the arrows, we're getting into this exact same repeat in history. New Aurora lights appearing in the skies back in April. They never saw it before. They had to give it a name. They called it Steve. And then it appeared again just a month after that. Chinese are very aware of changes in our sun. They even have full legends about when the crow appears, the earth changes. So back to the timeline and the amplification, how quickly are our lives going to change and our food production be affected? This is 2018. I will stay right now. Forecast for me is reduced production for the major grains in northern China, Canada, the United States, and Australia, and Europe once again, which will bring us down into digging into the what's left in the silos to make up for the shortages through 2018 food price spikes everything's risen at least 20 percent across the planet food price wise over these last few months so going forward that'll rise another 40 to 60 percent so you'll be looking at double food prices by the end of 2018 which will have an enormous effect on the economy you can't pull that much out of disposable spending to put it into food without all these businesses suffering now it gets really interesting around 2019 because this is where the earth enters what I call the crossover intensification line. All the Jovians are starting to line up with us on the other side, all bunched together. And as we get into the full winter of 2019, we can really see the effect magnetically that this will have on our planet. As we move through 2020, the Jovians are getting tighter in formation as well as we are getting closer to them. And even if Jupiter and Saturn and Neptune make that triangle formation there, once we get into 2022, it's gonna be very apparent the effects that are happening on our planet. And I do believe also that the electric universe will be the new base of science that will put all the projections going forward that what we've learned over the last 400 years will suddenly be usurped by the electric universe and David LaPointe's primer fields and how magnetism and electricity rule our galaxy. 2023, this will be the third year of global food shortages. And when we reach 2024, the global population will have decreased significantly by then through wars, disease, starvation, cold. And I'm not even gonna hold back. Two billion plus people are not going to be here by this time. That's a conservative estimate. The earthquakes and the volcanism are going to be at a high point during this. And when we start to look back in history and we see the trident, this is what they were talking about. The trident formation. It's in the temples everywhere. It's part of Hindu mythology. It's part of Greek mythology. It goes back into Asia. It's everywhere. They were trying to warn us that when we get to these planetary geometric lineups, our Earth's ecosystem and the populations have a very difficult time. That's why I'm saying at the very minimum, you're going to have to learn how to grow your own food. 
You're going to have to get with your community. You're going to have to work together because this is going to be an entirely different world at this point. And when we start to look back, 79 AD is about the time period that matches best with the software I had to roll back. If I could go back circa 3000 BC on the second coupling of Maurice Cottrell's 3740 year cycle, and I really believe I could find the exact same planetary geometry if we went back around 7,480 years ago. So talking about more powerful cycles lining up on top of each other. We have the 50-year cycle, which is being confirmed with the double typhoons passing over Taiwan. Look for the bare minimum of repeats of 1967 weather globally this year, and we're already starting to see that. And then John Casey's 206-year cycle, then we have the Eddy cycle at 1,000 years. And then we have Maurice Cottrell's 3,740 years. And when you start to lay all these cycles on top of each other, we come right back to that 7,480 year mark. And we can also find these same alignments back in 90 BC, 599 BC. The governments are actually keeping you in the dark. They are not warning you about what's coming. If I have this type of information, and I'm putting it out on YouTube, doing my own research. What do you think they have with their full staff of PhDs, satellites, their collection of ancient relics that they've pillaged over the last 400 years across the planet? What exists in the libraries we cannot access? What's in the Vatican's collection? The information they have, they're not sharing and there's a purpose behind it. If we are entering into a 7,400 year cooling cycle, the society you know right now is not going to be here in 10 years. But at the very bare minimum, if it matches up with 79 AD, this is a 2,000 year repeating cycle. Would well, that be a double eddy cycle? Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. I really hope this information can help you get ready because we are out of time. You see how quickly it's starting. And if you like these types of reports I'm bringing you, please support me on Patreon. I know there's a handful of you out there that don't like Patreon, so I've also included my cryptocurrency wallet deposit addresses, so if you want to leave something there, you can as well.